Hey everybody and welcome back to the Rails Coach Podcast. This is your host, Charles Maxwood. And this week I'm going to be talking about polymorphic associations. Now, a few things you may want to do if you're not familiar with active record models or active record associations. Um, I would go listen to the last episode I talked about associations. And I believe I have an episode on uh, Rails models as well. So I'll, I'll put a link in there if, if I've got it. But I'll definitely put a link to last week so that you can just go check it out. Um... I also want to let you know that I am looking for sponsors for my various podcasts. So if you're a listener and you think you want to reach out to new Ruby on Rails uh, developers that are learning to develop Ruby on Rails, then by all means, uh, give me a call or an email, chuck at teachmetocode.com. So when we get into polymorphic associations, like I said last time we talked about uh, just general uh, model associations. Now, an association just defines... Uh, a relationship between uh, one model object and another. And uh, generally it does this across two different models. So you'll have one model that belongs to some other model. You'll have another model that has a whole bunch of those. For example, posts has many comments and comments belong to posts. Now, if you want to muddy the water a little bit, let's say that you're building a standard blog and you have a page and you want uh, pages to have comments as well. So rather than create two models, a post comment and a page comment model, because they're basically the same thing, right? The only difference is, is that one associates to a page and the other associates to a post. So rather than do that, what you can do is you can set up on the comment model so that it can belong to pages or posts. Now there's another way that you could do this. On the comment, you could have a post ID and a page ID and then you just set whichever one is applicable. But that's still not ideal because effectively what you're doing is you're storing a nil value in the other column every time. And you have to check them both in order to make it work. And uh, it also gives you some, you know, you have to set up validations to make sure that you don't have a page and a post. Um, So, you know, just, just kind of messy. But Rails gives you a clean way of handling this. And what it does is it gives you polymorphic associations. Um, Typically, you'll see this on a belongs to. Um, So in this case, on the comment, it'll belong to post or page, and it'll be polymorphic. Now, polymorphic means that it can take uh, different forms. So this uh, belongs to is polymorphic because it can be a post or it can be a page. Now, typically, uh, what I've seen in Ruby on Rails applications is that people call this thing somethingable. So, for example, on a comment, it would be commentable. And, you know, and, and so we're, we're just going to stick to that convention. You can call it whatever you want. So you can say belongs to post or page and then make it polymorphic. And the way you make it polymorphic is you just give it the polymorphic uh, as a symbol. So it's colon, colon polymorphic hash rocket true. And there's a code sample on the in the show notes. Um, so So that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, belongs to commentable polymorphic true and you're off and running because then the comment can belong to anything. So on the has many, the, the, this becomes a little bit muddied too because if, if commentable can be um, a page or a post, then the comment, if you just on the page you say have many has many comments, it's going to go looking for a page ID on the comments table and it's not going to find it. So what you wind up doing is you you do a has many comments comma and then you do, you do a colon as hash rocket colon commentable and so basically what you're saying is um, I have many comments and the comments refer to me as commentable and you do the same thing in the posts and and again there's there's a code snippet or code sample on the website at railscoach.com that you can go and look at and get an idea for how this works so then what happens is if you have a belongs to commentable on your comment, then you're going to expect it to have a commentable ID on the columns table. And it does. But is that ID a post ID or a page ID? And that's that's answered by having a commentable underscore type column as well on the comments table. And that's a string column. And it stores the class name for whatever 
uh, is associated there. So if it's a post, it'll be post, and if it's a page, it'll say page, and it's a string, so it can just store it. And uh, then what it does is when you start doing joins or includes, then it knows that it has to go and look at the string, uh, the type column, the commentable type, and only look for the ones that are posts if you're pulling posts or only look for the ones that are pages when you're pulling pages and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it um, you have to be aware that you're doing this when you do your migrations obviously so you can set up the, the table right um, but other than that it works fine now one other thing I want to point out is that the the commentable can be anything I mean you could call it page or post or if you had some other entity in there, you could be page or post or that other thing. You can call it whatever you want. So name it something that makes sense to you. Just remember to make it polymorphic by adding the polymorphic hash rocket true at the end. And that'll that'll make it work and that'll do it. And uh, that's all there is to this one. Uh, pretty simple once you get into it. Um, I do want to point one other thing out and that is, is that many to many polymorphic associations just doesn't seem to work very well. So if you set up uh, has many, like if you have posts and pages and they both have tags and uh, categories, then it, it doesn't work so well. You know, the tags has many, uh, has many taggables, uh, true, false. It just, it, do, it doesn't, you know, polymorphic true. It just doesn't work. Um, there's a video that I did on teachmetocode.com and you can go and check that out and it will explain what some of the gotchas are there and uh, help you figure that out. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Um, if you want to learn Ruby on Rails, feel free to email me, chuck at teachmetocode.com. You can also call me at 801-367-6164. That's in the US, so you need to dial a 001 if you're outside of it. Um, if you have a Ruby or Rails application you want me to look at or work on, I do that as well. And you can reach me in the same way. I'm also on Twitter as CMaxW. Um, and I'm on Google Plus as well. I've had several people find me there. But I don't recognize the names and I'd like to. So if you're adding me on Google Plus or adding me on Twitter, um, by all means, just send me a quick tweet or you know, send me a little message that says, uh, Hi, Chuck. I listened to your podcast. Um, and I, you know, I like it or I don't like it or whatever. But, you know, just let me know that you're there. Let me know which podcast you're listening to and, uh, you know, a little bit about yourself so that I can get to know you a little bit better. I've gotten some emails from people just saying, hey, I like your podcasts. And I've been I've been e emailing them back and saying, hey, tell me a little about yourself. So there's all of that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really just want to reach out to people and get to know them a little bit better. So by all means, you know, um, uh, reach out to me. One last thing I want to cover. I've had a few people asking me when I'm going to have another Rails course. Um, I haven't told code, CodeLesson.com this yet, but I'm probably not going to do another course for them. Um, so I'll, I'll keep you posted. Um, hopefully I'll be sending out a newsletter letting people know when they can take my Ruby on Rails course. I'm going to let you know. I'm probably going to try and do it on my own. Um, I have a system all set up. I just need to add all the videos into it is all. Um, you know, and fine-tune some of this stuff because I think Rails 3.1 is going to come out soon. Um, but anyway, uh, to keep tabs on that, just follow me on Twitter or sign up for the newsletter over on teachmetocode.com. And uh, anyway, um, we're, we're due to have a baby here within the next few weeks, so I can guarantee you we're not going to start it then, and I'm going to be speaking at Rocky Mountain Ruby at the end of the month. So if you want to go to the Rocky Mountain Ruby conference, you can meet me there. It's in Boulder, Colorado. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be looking forward to that. So I'm thinking probably mid-September to uh, early October is when I'll be starting the next course. So anyway, that's all I've got. I will wrap this up, and I will see or hear from you next week. <laughs>